Today we're going to discuss the topic of APIs, Application Programming Interfaces. If you look up the weather app on your phone or on a website, most of these applications are not meteorological bureaus in themselves. They do not have the technology, they do not have the personnel and the know-how to be able to tell you what the weather is in a particular region, in a particular country, or to predict the weather in, in a week's time. Most of these are, are designed by engineers who go to specialized services and from there they get different information which they will then combine and present graphically in their app. Today, a typical weather app get information about the weather, UV index, air quality, and a multitude of other data that then they will present in a very nice manner in the app. When we're talking about APIs, what we are essentially describing is a situation whereby one endpoint goes to another endpoint and they communicate between them to get information. We're talking technology, we're talking computers, but the core principle behind any API is the protocol. There is a alignment between the two endpoints to make sure that a request originating from the client is understood by the server. What we have here is a human computer exchange and this is the self-service checkout. When you're shopping in a supermarket, you may encounter these self-service checkout. The steps here describe what a person needs to follow in order to be able to self-service themselves. One queues at the start of this self-service checkout, the indicator light comes on when a machine is available, one goes to it, scans or weighs each item, and as that is happening, the bill on a screen is being totaled up. Finally, when one has scanned everything, the person may be asked, do you have a loyalty card? And if yes, they'll be guided to scan this for benefits or points. At the end, the machine will ask the person, do you need bags or do you have your own? And depending on the button being pressed by the person, the bill is adjusted accordingly. The final stage is that of paying. One is using cash. One will be then guided on how to proceed, put the money. If one is using card, a different route will be taken. Once the transaction is complete, the person can then leave with their bag. Another example of a human system interface is the fast food drive to One drives up to a fast food diner and without leaving their car, they can order, pay and collect the food. A protocol is in place and this protocol must be followed in order to ensure that there isn't utter confusion. Putting it simply in a fast food drive through customer drive into the drive through lane, they stop at the menu and in a speaker, they state the items they would like to purchase, then they proceed further along and they pay for the foods they have ordered. Finally, the client moves to the third stage during which they pick up the food and then drive off. The protocol only defines the interactions that need to take place between the two endpoints. The client doesn't know whether there are humans preparing the food, robots preparing the food, or for that matter, Martians are making up the food. What is happening within the confines of the restaurant itself are blocked out. The restaurant doesn't know whether in the vehicle there are one person or there are ten people. The focus here is how one can communicate in order to achieve an end goal. Going back to computers, when we look at an API, we are looking at a protocol that is defined between a server and client computers. 
The protocol ensures that each side knows the sequence of actions and the order in which they need to be executed. If we think about, you know, the, the weather app, the start of the sequence is normally the client asking the API of the meteorological office that they need information. APIs, as we discussed just now, operate on the concept of a black box model. This means that the client computer does not need to know what the server computer does in order to arrive at the result. We do not know whether at the meteo station there are five people, a hundred people, whether they have one rain forecasting tool or a hundred. That is unknown to the client. The API only defines the data exchange method. One consideration is that once the API is operational, that API cannot be drastically modified. This is because if suddenly a datum that was not mandatory becomes all of a sudden mandatory, a lot of clients will not be able to consume the information. The protocol was broken, the contract between the two endpoints has been changed and this will result in a breakdown of communication. We have a part of a screenshot of a weather API. The API, once it has received and processed this information, will then return the data being requested. And the client will then need to understand how to decipher the returned information. And that Again, is also part of the communication process. This part was the non-technical explanation of what an API is. What follows now focuses on one of the services provided by Amazon, and this is the S3 service. S3 is a service that allows one to store files in both Amazon term buckets. This is similar to the OneDrive by Microsoft and Google Drive by Google. We will be looking at the API AWS Provide or S3 and we will demonstrate how this API can be invoked from different endpoints to perform the same function. What we will essentially do is that from a number of different endpoints we will create an empty bucket.